This is Splash, a new kind of system dynamics software for students, teachers, or anyone interested in systems. Splash combines liquid physics with system dynamics to create an intuitive, fun modeling tool for exploring how systems work. The model library in Splash is where work is stored. We can search for and sort models or create new ones. Let's start a new project to build a basic bank account model. First, we'll need a container for the cash to accumulate in. Next, we need a few pipes to capture the inflow of income and interest and the outflow of expenses. The parts of the model need names. The container holds cash. The outflow shows expenses. And the inflows are income and interest. We'll add a lever and connect it to the income pipe. Two auxiliaries will determine the interest and expense flows. The first is the fraction of cash spent each year, and the second is the annual interest rate. We can choose a symbol for each auxiliary. For interest rate, the percentage symbol makes sense. You can pick a color for the symbol, but for now, let's just leave it as is. The units for interest rate will be one per year. We'll set its value at 0.05, meaning 5% interest earned per year. For the fraction of cash spent, we'll use the symbol of a pie chart, give it units of one per year, and set its value to 0.15 meaning 15% of the cash is spent per year. Expenses every year are the product of the expense fraction and the amount of cash in the bank. So first off, we need a multiplication operator. Let's add that in. Next, we'll connect the expense fraction and cash as inputs to the multiplication operator and then connect it to the expenses flow. In the same way, we'll add another multiplication operator and set up the equation for the interest flow. With that, we've got all the structure for a basic bank account model in place. Let's go ahead and give the model a meaningful name. We'll call it My Bank Account, and also change the simulation time so it runs for 50 years. Think about what will happen as we increase income by moving the lever up and then tap play to simulate the model. Money flows in through the income pipe and accumulates in the cash container. As the cash increases, the interest and expense flows kick in and also influence the amount of cash. We can spot the changes in the system just by watching as the cash flows and accumulates. While that's pretty cool, it's also really useful to see what's happening over time. To do that, let's bring out the graph panel with all the variables automatically plotted over time. We can choose to merge graphs by dropping them on top of each other. That's useful if we want to see what's happening to one variable in comparison to another. Note that the working version of the software will have two scales on these merged graphs. Now let's say I want to make some changes and then re-simulate to see what happens. First, in order to compare a future run to one we already have, we freeze the plots on the graph by clicking on the anchor symbol. With that done, let's lower the income and tap play again. The model re-simulates and we can see the new plots taking shape in comparison to the frozen ones, shown as dotted lines. Let's play around a bit and set the income to zero. We can see the cash level is dropping. Let's push it way up. Now we see the cash filling up again pretty quickly. Take a look at the graphs and notice that they've tracked all the changes we made over time. Next, we're going to head back to the model library and open up an existing model on the carbon cycle. The model has a tub at the bottom to represent all the CO2 that's in the land and sea, and an inverted container for CO2 in the atmosphere. 
The levers control the natural emission and absorption of CO2. As we simulate, notice that the system is in dynamic equilibrium. That means that the model is moving and running, but the CO2 levels stay constant over time. In a variety of ways, including the use of fossil fuels, humans create CO2 that goes into the atmosphere. So we need another pipe and a control lever to represent these anthropogenic emissions from the land and sea to the atmosphere. We'll set this flow to reverse the gravity of whatever's flowing through it so that the CO2 flows up and into the atmosphere instead of falling back down. Students could work with this model to make the human production of CO2 more realistically represent how the system works. Let's tap play again and re-simulate. This time, the level of CO2 in the atmosphere is continuously rising. And as before, we can look at the graphs that track how the system is behaving over time. So now you've seen how to build models from scratch, simulate them, play around with inputs, and watch how the dynamics unfold. These examples show just a fraction of what will be possible to investigate with Splash. We now have a detailed design for the software and are excited to bring it to life. If you'd like to see Splash become a reality, Share this video with others and consider sponsoring this project. Thanks for watching from the Splash Team.